Hello everyone, my name is Sabrina Bruce. Um, I am an Agile coach, trainer and transformationalist and I'm working with the Agile 20 Reflect Festival. And today I am lucky enough to have the opportunity to interview the Roman Pritchler. Now, Roman Pritchler is one of the world's leading product management experts who specializes in digital products. So thank you very much for your time, Roman, today. Um, so this is gonna be a 15 minute session, so I'm extremely lucky. I've already explained to you I am a massive fan of yours. Um, so I'm going to go through some questions and the first one will be able to explain your Agile story. So what is your Agile story and what does Agile mean to you? Yeah, nice, nice to be here. So thanks for taking the time to talk to me, Sabrina. What is my Agile story? So um, how much time do I have? <laughs> so you have so 15 think, minutes in total. 15 minutes, great. I'll, I'll try and talk fast. Um, the first time I tried to apply uh, an Agile framework in earnest was in 2001. So I was working um, with a um, healthcare um, group um, and they had started to build a new product and got stuck. And so um, I was called in to help out with uh, the technologies that they were using. But looking at how they were working, they you know, was part of a large organization, very waterfall, very traditional, very hierarchical. We said, well, this is, this is going to be a new, brand new product, brand new technologies. You probably want something more lightweight, iterative. We've heard of this framework called extreme programming. Why don't we try that out? <laughs> and, um, <Keep> it going. <laughs> yeah, just, just try it out. And I mean, they were, they were desperate enough. They said, like, all right, then. Um, but it didn't work out too well, partly because uh, we lacked the understanding of what it really meant to run an XP project and what it really meant to apply agile values and principles. And then a second, I had a second opportunity in 2004 and I was working this time with a telco organization and the client said, you know, we, we understand we need different processes and we want to help you to um, employ um, a version of the rational unified process and tailor that for us uh, for again, a new product uh, development effort. And so that's how we started out and we, we tailored it and really made it super lightweight, integrated some XP practices, technical practices, and then had some issues around iteration planning and essentially then moved from uh, a, a tailored rational unified process to Scrum. And uh, that's when I started to um, um, you know, get in touch with people from the Scrum community and Ken Schwaber was kind enough to come and uh, teach us Scrum and uh, teach us how to do it. So. Um, um, and that's in a way where how how my agile journey and where my agile journey started properly. Um, what does agile mean to me? Uh, to me, uh, agile means working in a in a healthy, ethical way, um, and uh, creating value with what we do. Value for the users and customers, and value for the businesses that employ us. Um, so that's that's for me the essence of of, of agile. I love the fact that you can use Agile. Everyone typically feels that using Agile is just for engineering or software development. But you can actually use Agile in absolutely everything. I mean, I kanban my wedding. I organized my whole wedding using Kanban with my bridesmaids who didn't know anything about Agile. And it, it's that smooth and that easy to use as well. So my second question to you is, what advice would you give someone joining the Agile community in 2021? Oh, yes. Yeah, so the, um, Agile has grown so much, or the Agile community has grown so much. Um, we've got different frameworks and, and practices, techniques, uh, tools and flavors. Um, so my advice would be not to be uh, feel overwhelmed and too confused by everything that's on offer, but really focus on what what you want to achieve you know what's the outcome you'd like to achieve by embracing agile practices are you more interested in the product product management side of things you're more interested in technical practices you're more interested in processes and frameworks um, and then um, what's the what's the challenge that you're facing you know you, you're working on a brand new product you're working on a young product you're working on an existing or maybe mature and stable product because that will then lend itself towards selecting the appropriate practices um, but again you know that's quite a quite a product biased quite a product centric uh, approach but then well <laughs> that's what i do for a living <laughs> <laughs> very true very true you, you're right I, I can understand that i have multiple people that, that come up to me and it's like well where do i start because there is so much information out there but it's so much amazing information 
Um, so the next question, we're going through these a lot quicker than I thought. So, uh, what is the greatest challenge that you have experienced? Um, sorry, your enterprise will face to achieve an end-to-end -end agility across your organization. Yeah, interesting questions. I, I, I tend to focus very much on product, product management and the intersection of product management and agile. And so for me, when I work with larger clients that uh, go through a transformation, then usually it's on the product piece. So um, <laughs> that's sort of the biggest challenge that I tend to experience, <laughs> establishing a, either an effective product management group. And so, uh, you know, so I've seen this with banks, I've seen this with insurance companies, uh, but also with uh, clients in uh, the retail sector or the travel industry or um, what else, um, publishing companies, you know, media uh, companies, where traditionally there is no product management group, certainly not uh, for digital products. And so then one of the key challenges is to uh, think, um, understand not only um, you know what are our products, what are our assets, and who should manage or own those products, but to empower people and to give people kind of a, a home and form a product management group and have a head of product um, and and upskill people and find external people who can come in and inject the necessary product management knowledge into the organization. Um, and I see that as a certain extent independent of uh, the transformation, the agile transformation. Um, challenge I think it's related but um, I think it's worthwhile certainly being aware that in order to um, fully leverage an agile way of working it's kind of good to have a product focus a product orientation and to be clear on who should own products find the right people and and then trust those people and empower them have you found with the different industries so as an example you mentioned retail and telecoms have they been vastly different when you've gone in have you had to do things completely different or or are there any other industries where i know there's no similarities when you're implementing new processes and tools and frameworks but is there two areas that you've seen that are just the complete opposite scales of what you've needed to do yeah no nice nice question thank you um for asking it um, you know, certainly with the, the telco companies and the healthcare companies I've worked with, they, they did have established product management groups. So the challenge there was more helping the product managers transition into an agile world and embrace uh, an agile way of working, including an agile mindset and the appropriate uh, practices. So moving away from, you know, let's do all the market research upfront and let's kind of um, you know, put our product roadmap and requirement specification uh, in concrete and then hand off to a project manager who will then execute and you know we're gone to oh no 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 you know we like to try and do things differently um so yeah um that that can be quite a challenge as well personally it seems to me establishing a brand new or introducing a, a new product management organization to a company is even a bigger challenge than helping people make that that transition to start in from scratch, really. So when yes, I, I do think I do think it's harder. Mm. Right. Here's another one. Who is your agile hero? If you think about agile and you think about where you started, who is that hero? As I've already mentioned to you, you're one of mine. So who would that be? <laughs> <you? laughs> oh, it's very nice yours? of you to say, Sabrina. It's very nice of you to say. So I think the person who's had the biggest influence on me in terms of my agile path was Ken Schwaber. And um, I'm, I'm still very grateful to Ken uh, for what he's done for me. I think Ken was the person who really taught me Scrum, who really helped me understand what the Scrum framework is and how it can be applied. And you know, he used to be um, very much a, a mentor to me and somebody I looked up a, a lot, particularly in my early years. And um, another person I've benefited from tremendously and who's been very kind to me in terms of sharing his knowledge and advice has been Mike Cohen. So I've, again, tr benefited tremendously from knowing Mike and, and talking to Mike and um, yeah. Uh, so those, those are the two people that probably had the biggest influence on me. Do you still regularly speak to them? I don't uh, speak to Ken very often, uh, unfortunately, but I do speak regularly, fairly regularly to Mike. Mike's a very busy person, but uh, <laughs> I, I try and catch up with him once a year. I haven't spoken to Ken in a number of years. So, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've spoken to people uh, who, who have more contact with Ken, so I'm, I sort of roughly know mm -hmm. how he's doing. But yeah, it'd be, be nice to get him back in touch with Ken and, and chat to him face to face. So Great. Ken, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if I can tag him. Ken, Paul Roman, <laughs> and me. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay then, so the next one. Um, how can we best leverage the last 20 years of, um, of Agile to benefit projects, enterprises, and the future? So how can we learn from what's happened and, and you know, leverage from it? So for me, it's really the, the basics that in a way bring the biggest benefit. So um, building teams, um, you know, a group of people where the individuals learn to support and trust each other um, and work towards shared goals. Um, and to a certain extent, then setting those teams free in the sense that they can work in a fairly autonomous manner and that they uh, are, have the necessary empowerment. And that can be a, a bigger team in the sense of a Scrum team where you have a, a product owner, a Scrum product owner, and a, a Scrum master, Agile coach, and then a developers, development team members. Or it can be a smaller team, a technical team. But I think for me, those are really, really amazing, well, amazing ideas, but they are. <laughs> And they're still, I think, hard for some companies uh, to to put in practice. Um, so, uh, you know, that's that's really something where I hope that um, you know these are you know those are those are techniques, and then then the benefits will be that that hopefully um, that the products that are being created um, are maybe even more helpful for for the users and the business, and that the work environment is is healthy and enjoyable. It is it's absolutely beautiful to see when you do see, it's that communication level, it's that level of communicating and being able to communicate with that customer as well and the benefits actually just come out of it. And I believe more and more businesses are doing it, but there's still quite a few that aren't taking advantage of that. So if any businesses are looking, take advantage. Um, <laughs> right then, so the next one we've got is, what value do you think the festival will bring and why have you decided to be involved in our festival? Yeah, so uh, Scott uh, kindly asked me if I'd be interested in participating or, or you know, contributing. And I said, yeah, of course, I'd love to. Um, and so this is uh, how everything started for me. I think it's a fantastic idea. I think it's brilliant to celebrate Agile. I think it's brilliant to do it in a way that is um, very open and um, you know, where there's no barrier in terms of cost or you know, any, any ticket prices that you, uh, that you have to um, get across or get over so that it's free. I think that's amazing. I think it's amazing that so many different people are involved and there's a lot of variety and a lot of choice. I think it's a brilliant idea. I think um, Agile's, um, you know, within, within the Agile community, I think we've achieved a lot. I think we've, there, there are a lot of very positive things that uh, we probably uh, haven't invented, but we've, uh, I think, brought to, to the attention across a, a range of industries and, and um, so I think it's time to, to, to kind of be proud of that in a way or, you know, look back, you know, and, and, and say like, wow, you know, we've achieved a lot. We may still have quite a way to go. Not, not everything's certainly perfect yet, <laughs> but hey, we've achieved quite a lot. I don't think so. You know, if I just, for, for my kind of area of expertise, when I just reflect on, you know, how Agile has um, impacted, and I think personally uh, in, a, in a very positive way, product management, I think that's rather amazing. I, I really think so. You know, I, I remember I mentioned 2001 when I started uh, the first time working with an Agile framework properly. Um, you know, the product managers I worked with, they were so old school. And, you know, I remember having a conversation with one of them saying, look, you've written all these use cases. It's overwhelming for the development teams. You need to prioritize them. And, and you know, the lady looked at me and said like, well, what do you mean by prioritization? They're all high priority. <laughs> And, and she really she really didn't get it. She really did not understand how you could possibly prioritize these use cases. And I think, again, you know, as a, as a community, um, we've, we've come a long way. So I think something to be to be proud of and something to to celebrate. Well, thank you very much. Right. So this is one for you. So what are the next steps? What are the next things you're going to be doing next? Say so if I said in the next six months, what have you got coming up for yourself other than joining us at Agile Reflect? Yeah, so that's a very important, joining you at Agile Reflect, uh, trying to, to contribute to make it a success. Um, I'll try and uh, experiment with more YouTube videos. So that's something that I wanted to do going into the next year. We'll see how that uh, goes, um, not only in terms of all the technicalities, but also in terms of um, balancing my workload across the various things that I do. And then I've been thinking about updating one of my books. And again, that's sort of at the moment in a, in a stage where I need to um, experiment a little bit and probably start doing it and then see how much work that is and um, how it works out. Um, 
I'm, I'm always a little bit hesitant to update a, a product like a book, um, particularly if I haven't touched it for a number for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the risk is to end up rewriting uh, the, the book, and that's not necessarily something I want to do. So those are two, two projects for me that are coming up, and that, in a way, I'm looking forward to, yes. Exciting. You could always do volume two, next steps, or, or something like that, so then it kind of carries on with what you're doing, so you're not really... Yeah, that's right, that's right. It, it seems so, you know, in, in my field, things move quite quickly, and so it's kind of nice to keep, try and keep... Uh, I mean, I, I try and do that in my blog, but I, you know, I, I go back and I'll, I'll update articles if I feel, wow, okay, well, hmm, it's sort of okay what I say, but really, no, you know, it could be improved. So I'll do that with the books. Of course, it's much, much harder, um, but it's still kind of nice to try and keep them a little bit up to date if possible. Okay. Well, that's your time up now. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for taking the time to see me today. And we look forward to seeing you in the future and everything you're doing. And we look forward to see you at Agile 20 Reflect Festival. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Sabrina.